Sex and Algebra 2, Lesson 102. Here we are, cruising through week 27, halfway done already. Um, we're going to talk about functions a little bit today. And this is a lesson that illustrates one of the really cool things about functions. It's easy to add them and it's easy to multiply them. And we even have a couple different options of how to do that. So let's talk first about adding functions. And I would like to jump right into example 102.1. We're given two functions. The first one is named the h function. We say h of x. And it's a simple little function. You take whatever number you want to input and you add 3 to it. And there's a rule set up around this function, we didn't set it up, we, we're just inheriting this, that we can plug in any of the real numbers, okay? Now there's a second function, it's called the, what is that, that's not a theta, I think it's a, I don't know, it's a Greek, it's a Greek number, we don't know which one it is, I'll figure it out. That's the name of that function, and this one, isn't too much more complicated. We take whatever we're inputting, we square it, and then we subtract six. Now this one has a different limitation. This one, we're only allowed to put integers into. For whatever reason, again, not our rule, we just have to abide by it. And so what John has asked us to do is to find the h plus whatever letter that is. I wish I could grab my phone and Google it right now, but I can't. Um, I'll call it theta, but it's not theta. The h plus theta of 2. So what he's asking us to do is add the functions and find out what the value is for 2 if you put those two functions together. The first thing that we have to do is check for valid domains. And what I mean by that is that the number that we want to put in has to be okay with the domains for both of the functions, right? Two is an integer. So yes, it meets this test. It's also a real number, so we're fine with that. So th this number, this potential input, fits within both of our domains, so we're fine. There are problems where they don't fit, okay? So now we actually do the adding, and I'm gonna call that an asterisk. I'm not gonna call that a step one, but it is step one. The first, we have options. In the first one, we literally add together the functions. So I'm just gonna look at them right there. I'm not gonna copy them over. If we want the h plus, not theta, but pretend it is, of x, if we want to add them, it would simply be, um, we can just do it in order, x plus three plus x squared minus six. We're just adding together all of the elements. Okay, we can clean this up a little bit. This is supposed to be going straight through, not crooked. Equals, let's put the x squared first, and then let's put the x, and then let's combine those two numbers so it makes it minus three, right? Now we have a sum function, and we are gonna plug in that two value that John asked us about. And what that means is we simply put 2 in wherever there's an x. Right? There are my x's, so that I put buckets in place of the x, and I put in 2's. We've been doing problems like this for a long, long time, so this shouldn't throw you too much. So, let's see, 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. Minus 3 is 3. So we've 
answered John's question, the value of the h plus not theta functions some added together and two as their value, the h plus theta of two equals three. That's the right answer. So that's one way to approach these problems is to literally add the functions together. But we have another option. This time, we're not going to add the functions. We're going to solve each of the functions separately for two, right? The first was the h function, and that was x plus three, like this. So we'll put the two in right there. So the h of two is five, and the not theta of two, let's see, that was the one where it was x squared minus six. So this, we put the two in for the x. That's four minus six, that's negative two. And then we just add together the two solutions. So the h plus not theta of two, that's the way we write it, equals five plus minus two, which equals three. We get the same answer. So there are two ways to do this. And in different circumstances, you might prefer one over the other. This solution works really nicely if you only have to do it once, if you only have to do this calculation once. And in the homework, that's usually what we're doing. So this one is often the easier. This option works better when you're gonna be using this function over and over again and maybe have a bunch of different values that you wanna run through this sum function. So you might as well go to the extra trouble of creating it because you're gonna use it over and over again. So this is useful in other situations. If you were writing a program that was going to use this calculation, it would be an easy thing to write the calculation this way into your software and then it would work for any value you ever chose. All right, so pros and cons. We're gonna practice doing it both ways so that we get real smart. Cause you know, that's not, that's not a stretch for us. We can do this. Okay, the second one. This time we have an h of x. That is x plus three. And this time, again, the domain equals the reals. I'm not gonna write it all the way out. It's usually, it's reals and integers or like positive integers are usually the only choices John makes. And then we have another one called the g of x, which is two x squared plus five. And the domain of this one is, ooh, this is an example of what I said. It's the negative integers. Again, I'm abbreviating, and you can do that too. Just make sure you know what it stands for. We're supposed to find the h plus g of five. Ding, 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 ding. Always check for a valid domain first because in this place you see five. <coughs> Excuse me. Five works just fine for the h function because it's a real number, that's fine, but g is only allowed negative integers. Again, for reasons we don't understand or have any idea why, at this point, that's not, our, that's not our call. Someone else inserted this domain and we have to live by it. This does not fit in that domain. So five is not a member of the G domain, right? So our answer is null, null set, empty set, or no solution.
which again is why I tell you always check the domains first and make sure they work. Yay. Okay, the second part of this lesson is very similar to the first part. Let me explain to you how it's different and then we'll tackle it. This, in this first lesson, we were looking at sums of functions and we were adding them together, right? This time we're gonna look at products of function and instead of multiplying, I mean, instead of adding, we will multiply, all right? So same idea, but different. Okay, so this section is called products of functions. And we will have the same two options. I'll explain them in detail as we go. But we will have the option of literally multiplying together our two functions or solving each one separately and then multiplying our answers. All right, let's take on. But we still have to check our domains just like before. So example, 102.3. Find the h times g of minus four, where the h of x equals x plus three, and the g of x equals x squared minus six, the domain here is the reals, and the domain here is negative integers. All right, that's a pretty specific domain, so we're gonna be careful. This invites us to choose anything we want for x and plug it in, but this says, no, actually you can't, well, this one we can choose any real number. This one is quite specific. It says, I, you can't just plug in anything you want. It can only be a negative integer. Okay. So the first thing we do is check the domains. Check the value. I don't know if this is how I said it last time, but this is how my brain sees it this time. Check the value that we're being asked to calculate against the domains. Minus four, yeah, that's real. Okay, and this, yes, it's a negative integer. So we're good. Then option one, literally multiply the functions. Then, just wanna check my wording, solve. Okay, so if these are our two functions, how do we multiply them together? Well, x plus three times x squared minus six, we do the dance, just like we multiply any binomials, right? So we'll get x to the third plus three x squared minus six x minus 18. Okay, I just wrote it in a big fat long row here. And this, is, I'm just double checking to make sure I did it right, cubed, squared, plain x, yes, okay. This, we can say this is the h times g of x. I'm not gonna recopy it, right? Because this was the h of x, and this was the g of x, and we multiplied them together, and so this product is the h times g of x. Now we wanna find the h times g of minus four. So we're gonna plug minus four in everywhere there's an x. So first I'll just write it with buckets. And then I'll put a minus four into all of these places. And now we simplify. The h times g of minus four equals Okay, this is, I know the number is 64. Four times four is 16, times another four is 64. And it's gonna be minus, because it's three minus signs, right? So it'll, two will go together, and that'll end up. Four times four is 16. That's gonna be positive, because it's two minus signs. And then I have to multiply three times 64. I can do it in, well, I'll do it here. 
64 times 3. All right, so that's 192. Wait. Oh, look what I did. I put the cube here. It's only 16. So that's not what I need. See what I did? I got two carried away. I cubed here, so I cubed here again, but that's wrong. It's just the square. It's positive 16. 16 times 3 is 48. So this is plus 48. And then these two minuses make a plus. 24 and minus 18. Okay, so now we've got it down to just two positives and two negatives. Let's do 64 plus 18, that's 82. And the negatives, <clears throat> and then 48 and 24, This was 82, this is 72. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna write my answer right here. The H times G of minus four equals negative 10. That's the right answer and we did it, we got it by literally multiplying the functions together and then inserting our value into that expression. Again, this is a lot of work for just using it once. This approach makes a lot more sense if we go, oh, well, we're gonna plug in minus four, but then we have eight other numbers that we're gonna plug in too, because then we've got it all set and ready to go. But option two usually works best in the homework. And then option two we're going to solve the, uh, the functions individually and then we'll multiply the answers together. So let's go back. We need the h of minus four, and the h function was x plus three. So we'll make x plus three, put in the minus four. This is negative one. And then the g function was this quantity squared minus six. So we put in the minus four. Minus four quantity squared is 16. Positive, right, because the two minuses make a plus. 16 minus six equals 10. And then to find the h times g of minus four, we multiply these two together. 10, and there it is again, our minus 10. Okay, so it worked out beautifully both times. All right, and then one last problem, 102.4, find the f times g of minus four, okay, where the f of x, the f function is x plus three, we've had that one a lot, haven't we, where the domain equals the reals, Cool. So as I'm copying it down, I'm checking to make sure that this value is gonna work in this domain, because that's the first thing I do is I check my domains, right? That's beautiful. Now how about the g function? g of x, this time it's just x minus five. The domain equals, uh-oh, positive integers. Four is not a positive integer, so it is not a member of the domain, and that means our answer is the null set, the empty set, or we can say no solution. Some mathematicians have strong opinions about whether these are more or less the same or more or less different. 
and some would want to see one or two of these possible answers more so than the others. I embrace all three and I want you to show all three so that if you get to college and you have an instructor that does have strong feelings, you'll understand and you'll say, okay, well, I'm gonna give this instructor what he wants. Mathematicians have opinions, right? It isn't all cut and dried. Even in a subject like math, everything's not cut and dried. So cut and dried means, you know, black and white, crystal clear. I remember when I first heard that expression, I'm like, cut and dried, what does that even mean? Um,